How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi Battle. Today we're in about versus Bradger in the overused tier. I haven't touched OU in a while, so I figured I'd go back to it and use some cool fresh mons like Infernape and Primarina, etc. Let me know who you think is going to win based on the teams you see on screen right now. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Bradger. So they're going to lead off with whatever that is, the Hippowdon, as I led off with the Corviknight. I led off with Corviknight because I assumed they would go Glimora. So the plan was to U-turn into Flygon on the Glimora, break the Sash, Earthquake, go from there. But if the Hippowdon's leading off, then they're probably going to be Stealth Rocks, right? So I'm going to go for a slow U-turn. They do go for a Yawn, which is great. So I have um, I have zero IVs in speed with a relaxed nature on this Corviknight. Specifically so I can always get slow U-turns whenever I can. Depending on the Pokemon, obviously. So we withdraw and we are going to go into something that can take care of this Hippo. We get a free switch in. So we may as well go into Pre-Marina here. Pre-Marina can definitely take care of this Hippowdon. Definitely scares it out as well. So there we go. In comes Pre-Marina. Nice and shiny. Gotta love it. Uh, we're gonna get buffed by the Sandstorm, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Let's, um, if we assume they're gonna switch out into the Ogre Palm, we should go for a Moonblast, right? Or we should go for a, no, Flip Tim won't work because Water Absorb. So I think we go for a Moonblast here. Then again, if the Ogre Palm comes in, we can just go Corviknight. I think I'll go for a Surf because we don't know if they're gonna switch out or not. So they don't switch out, which is great for us. I'm glad I went for the Surf there, as that cleanly takes out the Hippo. They kind of couldn't risk the Ogre Pond taking unnecessary damage from a Moonblast, so I can see why they let the Hippowdon go down there. It's not really the most best Pokemon against our team as well, so that makes sense. So in comes that Pokemon, which is going to be what exactly? The Ogre Pond. So Ogre Pond gets a free switch in now. Um, it's not Focus Ash, because I, I don't think the Wellspring can hold an item. I think it's just the Grass-type one that can hold an item, so... Uh, what are we going to here? I'd say Corviknight's the best bet because if they're going to go for a Horn Leech, we better go into Corviknight. If they predict the switch and go for an Ivy Cudgel, it's not the end of the world. Because Corviknight is defensive, so we can definitely take a hit from this thing, no problem. So, in comes the Corviknight, like so. Silvera comes in, nice and shiny, gotta love it. Um, I really like shiny Corviknights. They go for a Horn Leech, which isn't going to do any damage. And then we're going to get some Rocky Helmet Chip on them as well, which is great. So, any chip we can get on the Ogre Pond, the better. So, they're going to get hurt by the Sandstorm, but us being a Steel-type... Don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to go for a U-turn now because they probably switch out here. If they do attack us, then so be it. We'll just go into Infernape and U-turn again. So they go for a Taunt to stop us from Roosting, maybe. Or going for an Iron Defense. We could be an Iron Defense set for all they know. Um, but we actually go for a U-turn here, which is going to do a decent bit of chip damage to the Ogre Pond. And now we can go into Infernape. And unfortunately, we are going to reveal that we're Scarfed here. Um, but it's fine. I don't really see any other options. So we're going to have to go Infernape. There we go. Sun Wukong comes in. The Infernape. I just had to use Infernape again because I haven't used Infernape in such a long time. I know I could use Infernape in UU, but it's just I just never got around to doing it. And it's been doing surprisingly well with the Choice Scarf set in this tier. So I'm going to go for a U-turn. It will definitely KO the Ogre Pond and we outspeed, which is great. So they go, they go ahead and stay in. They lose their Ogre Pond to a U-turn. They obviously didn't expect us to be Choice Scarf. They might have thought we were going to go for an Iron Fist boosted Mac Punch. Um, which would have made sense, but now at, at least they get a free switching on whatever we decide to go into. So I'm leaning towards the Glimora to get the Stealth Rocks up for that Volcarona and the Frost Moth, but they probably have Heavy Duty Boots anyway, so it's not really the end of the world. And um, what I am looking at is potential Flygon. That's what I'm kind of looking at. Potential Flygon. Um, no, I don't think it's time for Flygon to come in. I think we go, I think we go Pre-Marina, and um, because we can flip turn on whatever they go into. Or we can just straight up attack. So we'll go Pre-Marina. Pre-Marina is not really crucial for winning this game. The Sandstorm does subside, which is great. And now they're going to go into whatever that is. The Sociable, the Frost Moth. So Frost Moth, nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. So this thing, we do wall it to an extent. Unless it's Terra Electric. But I want to go for a flip in anyway and get something else in. They go for a Quiver Dance, which is really scary. Um, they are probably Terra Water, if I had to guess. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to flip turn on them. See how much damage it does. There we go. Um, Infernape still outspeeds because of the Choice Scarf. So we can go in and, and, and I'm assuming they're going to tear a water. So I'm going to go for that Thunder Punch. Um, we resist both stabs. So they kind of have to tear in order to hurt the Infernape. So I'm going to go for that. And I'm going to make the prediction of the Thunder Punch. I feel like that's the way to go. Um, so what are they going to have? They're going to have Leftovers, which is interesting. So if we get the Stealth Rocks up, this Frost Mouth is going to take some damage. Um, so we go for a Thunder Punch here, no problems. I'm not Terra Electric, but I can go for it anyway. So they do withdraw. They just straight up withdraw their uh, Frost Moth. They don't want to get hit by a Flare Blitz. They don't want to Terra either. And they're going to go into their Glimora, 
who can definitely take a Thunder Punch, that's for sure. And definitely take a Thunder Punch pretty well. They get the Toxic Spikes up, but we do have our Glimora of our own, which can come in and uh, do something about that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to withdraw. I'm going to go into... I want to go Flygon. I think I will go Flygon here. I think Flygon's the way to go because they can't Earth Power us and they can't really touch us in general. So we withdraw our Infernape. Now, they haven't Terrored yet, so they could easily pull something back here with the Terror. So I can't really sweep with Flygon just yet. Um, they do go for a Power Gem, though, which will do a decent bit of damage, but not too much. Um, now I'm going to go for a Dragon Dance. I don't see any reason not to go for a Dragon Dance. If they Mortal Spin, so be it. But they do withdraw. And what are they going to go into? Are they going to go the Frost Moth? Yeah, the Frost Moth comes back in. So Frost Moth the Sociable comes in in a Beast Ball as well, I just noticed. That's pretty cool. We get a Dragon Dance off, which is amazing. Now, what kind of move... Are they going to Terra here? That's the real question. I think I should Terra. I think I should Terra because I'm Terra Steel with Levitate. So I think I should Terra just in case this um, Scale Shot doesn't KO. And then we go for a Scale Shot because they're probably going to Terra themselves. So um, if I had to guess. So we'll Terra Astralize real quick like so. There we go. Flygon's looking pretty good right now. Not going to lie. Flygon is looking pretty good right now. So um, with our Terra Steel in effect, we can definitely go for a Scale Shot and we can live a hit from this thing. So we hit the Scale Shot, which is nice. Can we get all five hits to get the KO? I think I don't even think five hits will KO. Yeah, they won't. They won't KO. They're gonna barely live. They barely live. They barely live. But luckily for us, they didn't terror. No, that's not lucky for us. Because it means they can terror on something else. They go for the ice beam though, which we are gonna eat up. But does it freeze us? It doesn't, which is great. No freeze, that's fantastic. So we outspeed their potentially booster energy um roaring moon as well. And um, we can just go for a fire punch now and get the KO. There we go. Fire punch comes through. No need to worry to risk the scale shot missing because that would be really awkward if it did. But with the frost muff out of the way, we're in a pretty good position. Now we are only plus one attack and the flagon doesn't have the best attack in the world. So it's not necessarily over yet. So in comes that, the sociable. Is that going to be the frost muff? Uh, the frost muff, the volcarona. It is the volcarona. So now we basically have to go for a scale shot because it will, if we can hit all five times, it'll do more damage than earthquake. If we can hit it. So let's go for the scale shot real quick. We do we do hit, which is great. And that is going to get a critical hit on the first one, which is really unfortunate for them. But it might not even be enough, especially if we only hit four times. Which we might. We only hit four times. That's really unfortunate. Um, we lower our defenses, but we do boost our speed. And hopefully they don't quiver dance here and they go for a KO. They are going to reveal they have a berry as well, which is going to boost. Oh, that's going to boost their stats. Their defense, interesting, as they go for a fiery dance, which is definitely going to KO Flygon. So Flygon did pretty good there. Flygon definitely did pretty good there, which is amazing. Um, now, though, I think Infernape could potentially win us the game. Could potentially win us the game. But now, I'm just going to go into my... I want to go into Pre-Marina. I'm going to go Pre-Marina because it walls Volcarona to no end of the world with the Assault Vest on it. So we'll go Pre-Marina real quick like so. And then we do get poisoned, which is unfortunate, but we can get rid of the poison later. Not on the Pre-Marina, obviously, but in general, the poison spikes. Um, so I kind of want to go for a flip turn here. Kind of want to go for a Surf. Kind of want to go for a Moonblast, expecting them to switch out. I think I'll go for the Surf play. And they don't actually Terra, which is interesting. So they go for the Morning Sun. Let's see how well they take this Surf. That's, for, that's the real question. So they don't take it, which is great. So Volcarona goes down. Um, now they basically have to go Roaring Moon, and it has to be the Terra Flying Acrobatic set for them to have a chance of winning here. So we're in a very good position with this team. So, I, you know, for my return to OU, I think we're doing pretty good. So um, they go into whatever that is, which is going to be the Glimora. This, this does outspeed us, of course. Um, but I am going to go for a... I'm going to go for a Surf anyway. And um, they go for a Power Gem, which isn't going to do much damage. So they clearly don't have Poison Stab, which is fine. But they have weakened us to the point where the Roaring Moon can definitely KO us with uh, Terra Flying Acrobatics. Um, so that's probably what they're going to do. So we get the Surf. Glimora goes down. Let's see how this plays out for the rest of the game. Um, as the Monroe is going to get some poisoned. And in comes the Roaring Moon, their final Pokemon. They haven't Terrastalized yet. I'm assuming they will Terrastalize here. They are Booster Energy. What are they going to be Booster Energy in though? Attack. So not Speed, which is great. So we outspeed them. With, so if they terror flying dragon dance, it could all be over. It could all be it could be a reverse sweep. So let's go for a moonblast real quick. And they do terrestrialize. What type are they gonna be though? That is the real question. What type are they gonna be? Are they gonna go for a dragon dance as well? That's the other real question. So 
They are terrifying, which is terrifying, because um, that acrobatics is going to sting. They go for a substitute. Not what I would have gone for there, personally. I would have definitely gone for the Dragon Dance. We go for the Moon Blast, which is definitely going to break that sub, which is great. So the substitute does break, which is fantastic. And now, now that we know they're, ice, they're flying type, we can just go for an Ice Beam. And if they Dragon Dance, they, they lose their um, Roaring Moon. So let's go for an Ice Beam. There's no reason not to. Um, because they're probably going to they they have to KO us here. And if they KO us, we bring Inferno Pin out, Speed and Thunder Punch. There we go. They go for the Acrobatics, which is great for us. As that's going to take out our Primarina. And it means Infernape can come in. It will outspeed. And we can hopefully get the KO with a Thunder Punch. But I feel like maybe Infernape's going to let me down here. So let's go into Infernape real quick, like so. Nice and choice scarfed. I, I really hope it doesn't let me down. But I'm hoping an Iron Fist boosted Thunder Punch will KO here. So let's go for it and find out. Maybe Flare Blitz would do more. I don't know. So we Thunder Punch. There we go. Oh, it doesn't get the KO, unfortunately, as they go for the Acrobatics. I knew Infernape would let me down. That's unfortunate. So Infernape does let me down, but I think the MVP of this game was definitely Flygon on our team because it did a lot of damage to their entire team. Um, this Roaring Moon was terrifying, though, I will say. Um, but we do have the Corviknight in the back, so we don't have to worry too much as I am going to go into Corviknight like so. Nice and shiny. Gotta love it. And then we go for a Brave Bird, which is definitely going to KO the, uh, the uh, thing. They go for a knockoff. Not going to do too much damage to us, as the Rocky Helmet will hurt the Roaring Moon and KO it. And that's going to be the game. So GG Bragger, that was a pretty fun one. I enjoyed that one. Um, definitely enjoyed that one. It was a really fun one. Uh, GG Bragger. Moving on to the next game. And the second battle is against Chucho once again in the OU tier, using the same team as the first battle. Hopefully we can get one of the team members to pull off much better, but um, looking at their team, pretty powerful stuff, I will say. They are another Flygon enthusiast, which is really cool to see. Um, but let me know who you think is going to win in the comment section down below. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the first game, into the second game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Chucho. So they're going to lead off with the Fierce Alloy, which is the Archalodon as we lead off with our Primarina. So I know I can live any hit from this thing, no problem. It's not a rain team, so we don't have to worry too much. Um, I am leaning towards going for a Moonblast straight away, just because it'll do a lot of damage, in, unless they're Assault Vest. So I'm going to go for a Flip Turn instead. They go for the Thunderbolt, which is going to sting a little bit, but not too much because of the Assault Vest. And we go for that Flip Turn, get on out of there, and break a potential Focus Sash, because they have led with it after all, so it could be Sashed, but I doubt it. Um, a Sash Archelodon is not really a thing, right? But anyway, what can we go into to take on this thing? So I'm leaning towards the um, Glimora for the Earth Power. And the fact that we've got Focus Sash. Stealth Rocks could really hurt their team as well, but they're probably tidy up on the Mouse Hold, right? Um, so I think I should go into Glimora and actually just go for an Earth Power. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in Topaz, the Glimora. Didn't actually get to hit the field last game. It's nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. Uh, let's go for that Earth Power real quick, just to get um, some damage off, immediate damage on the Earth Chalodon. Does a clean 45% to the remaining HP, which is great. They do get another Stamina Boost, and then they go for a Flash Cannon, which is going to definitely take us down to our Sash, um, which is unfortunate. So that was a crit, but I don't think the crit mattered. Um, let's see what else we can do here. So we hang on with our Focus Sash. Now we can just go straight for another Earth Power. We're not going to get the Stealth Rocks up this game, which is unfortunate, um, unless they switch out here, which I don't think they will. So we go for another Earth Power, which is going to do pretty much enough damage so we can finish this thing off no matter how high its defense goes. We can finish it off with like the Infernape or something. So they go for a T-Bolt to finish us off. And down goes Glimora. But Glimora did good because our Chaladon is a big threat to our team. Um, so getting that thing out of the way early on is going to be great for us. So what I'm going to do now is I want to go Flygon and Earthquake. Because looking at their team, their best bet's probably going to be their own Flygon to come in. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into Flygon. And they're going to expect an Earthquake, right? They expect an Earthquake, so they don't Terror. So I think we go for a Scale Shot predicting their Flygon to come in. I think it'll be ballsy for them to go into their Flygon, but I think they will. So I'm going to go for the Scale Shot. They do stay in and let it go down, which is fine. Um, they get a Stamina Boost every time we go for Scale Shot. But at least now, our Flygon's in a very threatening position because it's going to have a boosted speed. Which means it outspeeds the Superior, it outspeeds the Volcarona which it does anyway, I think, and it outspeeds their Flygon, which is going to be really useful for us. So in comes the Found Family, which is going to be the Mousehold, 
Interesting choice. So I'm going to withdraw my Flygon. And I'm going to go into Corviknight. Because this thing is pretty much immune. Not immune. But the population bomb will kill them from the recoil from Rocky Helmet. So if we can get them to go for a population bomb here. Which I think they might. Or they just Terra. Straight up Terra. What type are they going to Terra into though? That's the real question. They're going to go Fairy because of the uh, scale shot. Maybe. They are Terra Fairy which is interesting. So they probably go for a Tidy up here. But Corviknight does wall them to the ends of the earth. So we should be alright as they go for that Tidy up. Which is going to clean the battlefield nicely. They've done a good job there. And then it's going to boost them and give them a Dragon Dance pretty much. So now we're in a pretty... We're not in a pickle, but let's go for a Brave Bird. Um, they go for a Bite, which is going to do no damage to Corviknight. Rocky Helmet's going to do more damage. Um, but we go for a Brave Bird, and that is definitely going to do a lot of damage to the Mouse Hold. There we go. So damage is being dished out. And looking at the team, nothing wants to take a Brave Bird. So I'm going to go for another Brave Bird here. There's no reason not to. They do withdraw. They have to go Flygon here, really. Um, but they go into Ulgamoth, the Volcarona, I'm guessing. Yeah, the Volcarona comes in. We go for a Brave Bird once again. That's going to do a lot of damage. There we go. That's a lot of damage to the Volcarona. So now, we're in a bit of a tight spot because this thing can Quiver Dance. And I can't let it Quiver Dance. I really can't let it Quiver Dance. So I'm going to have to go for a Brave Bird here. They do go for a Fiery Dance to take us out. I just... if I Because the switch was really obvious for the Corviknight, right? So it was a good opportunity for them to go for a Quiver Dance potentially. Um, and I just couldn't let them do that. So I had to let Corviknight go down. Um, which is unfortunate, but it's whatever. So now we've got a couple of options. We could go into our uh, Infernape. Close combat will KO the mouse hold at the health that it's at. It'll also KO the Volcarona at the health it's at. I think we go Infernape. I think Infernape can put in some work here. So we're going to Sun Wukong. I think Infernape puts a lot of work in against their team. So I'm going to go ahead and go for a close combat here. I don't see any reason not to. So they withdraw the Volcarona. What are they going to go into to take a close combat though? That's the real question. Superior? Drag Cephalus. Which is going to be the Quackable. That's an interesting one. So close combat comes through. It should two shot. It does two shot, which is great. However, if they have Aqua Jet, it's going to do a lot of damage to my Infernape. Um, so I'm going to go for another close combat anyway. They do go for the Aqua Jet, which should do a lot of damage. It actually KOs. That's really good. And they're going to get a Moxie Boost from that as well. So there's the Moxie Boost. Are they choiced? Because that did way too much. I know Infernape's frail, but seriously... So I guess we have to go into Flygon here. So because they've gone ahead and done that, I think we have to go for an EQ or a Scale Shot here. I think we have to go for a Scale Shot. I think Scale Shot is the way to go. If they go into Mouse Hold, then we just switch into Magna Zone and we get a free Flash Cannon off, which will KO something on that team because it's Choice Specs and Analytic. So let's go for the Scale Shot real quick. Hopefully we don't miss. We don't miss, which is nice. That's going to definitely KO the um, Quackable right there. And get us a nice and powerful speed boost and a defense drop. So there we go. So Quackable goes down, which is great. We don't miss the scale shot, which is really nice. <laughs> really nice. But we do lure our defenses, which is unfortunate. So in comes the found family, which is going to be the mouse hold. So mouse hold's an interesting one here because they don't outspeed us now. We can just go for an EQ. I am going to go for the EQ. I don't see any reason not to. So they withdraw found family this time. What are they doing? And they're going to go into Volcarona. Oh, are they baiting something? Oh, they might be baiting us um, to go for a contact move. They might be baiting the contact move um, so that we get burned from the flame body. But we're not going to do that. We go straight for an EQ, which is going to take out the Volcarona right there. But I think their best bet is probably going to be Superior. So they go into Cotiolodon, which is their Superior. So Superior comes in. It looks tiny compared to Flygon, which is crazy. We're going to Terra Steel here. And I am going to go for a Fire Punch. And the reason I'm going for Fire Punch is A, it's super effective. B, I don't want to risk missing the Scale Shot because no doubt in my mind it will. Um, and, B, and C, Terra Steel helps us against that Leaf Storm. It makes us resistant to it, which means we can definitely take one. Um, and because they've already terrored with a Mouse Hold, we don't have to worry about it. So Flygon comes through and goes for a Fire Punch, which is going to two-shot the Superior, which is great. They go for a Glare, though. Oh, that's no good. That's no good at all. So that's unfortunate. We go for another Fire Punch anyway. Um, I don't think they'll have Synthesis. If they do have Synthesis, then they're probably better off going for it until we get fully paralyzed. So they go for a Leaf Storm, which is going to do a decent bit of chip damage to us. Um, I'm pretty confident that if they do get paralyzed, we don't get fully paralyzed. So it doesn't really matter what I was about to say there. 
I was gonna say if we do get fully paralyzed, we can at least take one more leaf storm. But it doesn't matter because we we didn't get fully paralyzed, which is great. So the superior goes down. Now they go into Sandbender, the Flygon, their own Flygon, nice and shiny. Gotta love it. And um, we have to go for a scale shot here. It's the only way to KO this thing. I'm pretty confident we can live a fire punch from them. But we don't know what set they are, so they're gonna withdraw. They expected the scale shot. Which is fair enough, and they're going to go into mouse hold. But why? We go for the scale shot, and obviously it fails, which is great for them. Now we go for an EQ, and they kind of... They go for a bite. Okay, so bite comes through. That could flinch us. We couldn't move because we were fully paralyzed. Oh dear, that is not good. That is not good. So Flygon unfortunately gets screwed over by the para hacks as they go for another bite, which is going to KO us. So down goes Flygon. But Flygon did really well in both games there. Like, really, really well. It didn't, like, sweep their team, but, like, the scale shot buff that it got with the Indigo Disc is amazing. So, that's always nice. So, now, what we can do is we can go Magnazone. Um, I'm, I'm leaning towards the Magnazone, so I am, I am going to go Magnazone. So, we're going to good old Authority over here because we don't have the Infernape anymore. So, um, we can't outspeed that, fly, uh, that Flygon with anything. So, Flygon could pull this back for them. I'm going to go for the Flash Cannon. They do go for a bite, which is going to do minimal damage, but it could flinch us. They do flinch us, which is unfortunate. Let's go for another flash cannon, because why not? They go for a tidy up. Why the tidy up? We're going to flash cannon you in the face. But I guess it doesn't really matter, because mouse hold is not their win condition. We go for the flash cannon. That's going to take out the mouse hold, no problem. So there we go. Mouse hold goes down. And um, to be honest with you, I would have just gone, kept going for the bite there, just to try and get the flinches and stuff, but... It is what it is. It doesn't really matter now. We're getting close to the end of the game, so it's not a big a deal. So in comes the Sandbender, the Flygon. So this thing can definitely KO us with Earthquake. We can't let it set up a Dragon Dance, so we have to stay in and go for a Flash Cannon. And they do go for the Dragon Dance. And if they live this Dragon Dance, they actually win with Flygon here. Which is crazy. But I, we are Choice Specs, and it's Analytical Boosted. and um, Which basically means if you go last, it boosts the move's power. And there was no chance in heck that Flygon was taking that. So GG Chucho. That was a fun game. I think that was your only chance really of winning. Um, but to be fair, I think Earthquake had a good chance of KOing Primarina from the health it was at without a Dragon Dance. So you might have been able to pull it back if you did just Earthquake there. But hey ho, it is what it is. It's all in hindsight. But anyway, here is the team. Try it out if you want to use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, of course, leave a like, subscribe, all the wonderful stuff. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.